Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking to uh, Rud van der Brink from TE Connectivity, and we're going to be talking about mini I/O connectors. Hi, Rud. Welcome to Design Spark. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, great to be on here. Good. Let, let's get into it then. So the RJ45 has been the default connector of choice used so far in industry IoT applications. Do you see mini I/O connectors becoming a new standard in IIoT? And if so, how quickly do you expect that to be adopted across the industry? Um, yeah, let's start at the basis. Um, RJ45 is a very well known and a very uh, often used connector uh, in the industry, but also out of outside of the industry. Officially, it has been been made as an uh, as an office connector uh, that made its way into industrial applications. Uh, yeah, because the, the basis of it is uh, is an office connector and not industrial, uh, it raises uh, problems in certain application areas. And especially uh, if that has to do with uh, shock and vibration, uh, EMI, uh, which are typically uh, uh, industrial uh, environmental uh, problems and, and uh, they do not necessarily occur in an office uh, environment. Um, if RJ45 in such uh, environments is not a good solution, uh, um, we have STE Mini IO, a very good uh, solution that uh, addresses uh, these problems. Um, it is an uh, IEC standardized connector, so I think that is uh, extremely important to know. It's not a proprietary uh, development. And uh, uh, as we speak, it is uh, basically adopted by a number of um, industrial uh, user organizations uh, like PNO, uh, like Faran, um, and they are, um, let's say, becoming an, uh, a solution that is an integral part of these type of network uh, implementations. Um, so we see an acceptance in the industry uh, for a reason, and um, that has also been reflected in the number of applications that we see in which it is used and the number of customers that are actually uh, using those solutions instead of RJ45. Yeah. And also with the, the mini IO, the it's 25 percent the size of um, RJ45 connectors. So that gives you a clear advantage when it comes to space saving on the board. But how does it compare in terms of assembly and ergonomics? Yeah, I think uh, um, quite important is that it is uh, um, a component that can be used in uh, pick and place machines. So that is uh, uh, important. And even more important uh, is that uh, the board connectors are uh, 260 degrees C reflow solderable. Um, yeah, I think that is an, a very, very clear advantage. Um, not only the size is an advantage, uh, there are more things uh, on this particular connector that make it uh, make it industrial uh, preferred, I would say. Um, if you look at RJ45 as an example, there's still a lot of uh, plastic bits and pieces uh, on the mating interface uh, that is tend to uh, uh, wear out over time. Yeah. And mini I.O. Uh, both on the port connector as well as on the cable connector have a mating interface uh, made out of metal. Uh, which is uh, better performing and, uh, let's say, better resistant against uh, wear over time. Um, and if you don't uh, uh, wear out over time, of course, your connection and contact interruptions that might occur uh, are basically minimized. OK, but also um, my understanding of the IO, many IO connectors, they're designed to be field installable. So how did that that innovation come about and, and why do you consider that to be a, an important feature? Yeah, um, it, it is basically um, developed over the, um, the, the the set of products that we have as uh, STE for the industrial space. Um, if you look at RJ45, uh, there's three types of uh, connectors that you can distinguish. Uh, first one is the board connector, the jacks. Uh, the second one is the overmolded cable uh, connector that is used in cord sets. And then if you're not able to route uh, such a cord set through confined spaces, uh, make uh, very sharp turns in a piece of equipment, yeah. uh, you may be forced to only push the cable through. And of course, you need to terminate it at the other end. And that is where you see the use of uh, field installable connectors coming in. Right. So you need those three, um, let's say, variations 
uh, to be able to offer a complete connectivity portfolio. Um, we did that for RJ45. Uh, we are doing this for uh, M8 and M12. And of course, it's a next logical move to do that for uh, uh, Mini IO as well. Okay. So obviously, with Mini IO, the, the assemblies are designed to connect Mini IO to Mini IO, but you also have Mini IO to RJ45. I'm just wondering why you prioritize that. Is, is that to do with maybe retrofitting or, or something similar? It is uh, related to uh, retrofitting, that is one, and it is also related to having a mix of um, various co connectivity standards in a single rollout. Uh, you can imagine uh, that there are areas in an industrial rollout where shock and vibration uh, yeah. is not present. Uh, take uh, a certain cabinet uh, that is in a remote area of your rollout, uh, uh, which is even, um, let's say, having all of the equipment be uh, behind the closed door. Uh, you can imagine that RJ45 uh, is uh, perfectly capable of doing the connectivity job there. Um, at the other end, where you connect to equipment that is used on the factory floor, that might be different. And that is where you see the mix of those uh, those connectivity standards coming in. Okay, that, that brings me on to uh, applications for mini IOs uh, you, you talked about on the factory floor. So what would you consider to be some of the the ideal applications and the benefits of using mini IO maybe compared to previous connectors within those applications? Yeah, I, um, I basically can uh, can point out a number of uh, different applications. Uh, let's start with uh, um, drives, motor drives. Uh, often a motor drive is uh, mounted on top of the motor. If it is uh, smaller, uh, it is prone uh, to vibration. Uh, that's, of course, the, the nature of the environment. If the motor is, uh, is rotating, uh, starting and stopping, uh, that brings movement to the entire uh, chassis and to the entire environment. Um, we already have uh, a good number of customers that have used, for instance, RJ45 in such an environment. And uh, the conclusion was that it was really problematic uh, because of the contact uh, interruptions and the associated loss of uh, communication uh, between uh, between the drive and the remote uh, side of the network. Yeah. And uh, replacing that by Mini IO uh, uh, did solve the problem there. And similar type of application uh, you will find in robotics. Also there you see movements. Uh, a lot of the robots uh, have limited space, so that is where Mini IO is uh, is also a very uh, interesting uh, solution. And um, yeah, we're able to uh, address the similar problems as you would see in a uh, drive environment. Yeah. And then the third one that I like to raise is um, an, uh, an implementation uh, in the cabinet, uh, DIN rail equipment, and small slices in DIN rail. You can imagine that if the connector is uh, smaller, uh, the width of those slices can be reduced significantly. And with Mini IO, you can make uh, equipment slices uh, down to the level of uh, 15 millimeters, uh, which is significantly smaller, more than a centimeter smaller that you would traditionally get when you implement them with an RJ45. So even if that environment is not really uh, an environment where shock and vibration is playing, uh, the sheer size aspect and the uh, efficiency in building small systems is uh, is another reason uh, to use them. Yeah, the the other thing I want to ask you about is uh, I I love this saying uh, fighting the snake principle. Can you explain how Mini IO contact systems reduces contact failure, improves uh, conductivity, but also the lifespan? I guess a lot of it's to do with the vibration and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it has to do uh, with the way that the, the, the contact uh, system is working. It basically interlocks the two contacts in a way that it creates two uh, separate contact points. Um, and of course, if you uh, shake equipment, um, then you always will find that a movement uh, of contacts take place. Um, the design is such that if the contacts move, uh, always one of the two contact points remain in contact and therefore you can uh, avoid complete uh, signal interruptions due to contact uh, uh, contact interruptions. So that is, um, I would say, a key thing that Mini IO has over RJ45 or other solutions that you will find in, uh, in the field 
and that is uh, making it a really uh, rugged solution uh, um, with good performance uh, on the shock and vibration side. Yeah. The, the other thing, obviously, in the industrial setting is um, signal integrity. As you mentioned before, uh, industrial environments very noisy, EMI. So what are the design features within Mini I.O. which can help maintain signal integrity? But also you, you, you did mention about resistance to shock and, and, and vibration as well. Yeah, my, um, I mentioned one of the one of the reasons uh, before. Uh, Mini I.O., uh, both uh, the cable uh, plug as well as the board uh, plug are um, having mating interfaces completely made out of metal. Uh, that reduces the, the um, wear and tear. And on the other hand, because it is a 360 uh, uh, degree uh, metal shielding, it automatically helps in uh, keeping the, the um, electromagnetic uh, interferences out. And, yeah. um, it is a complete uh, sealed, I would say, a metal solution. So better as that is, uh, is hard to get. Um, and then if you compare that to unshielded solutions, uh, for sure, uh, the uh, performance difference is uh, absolutely there. And yeah. uh, also in the case that you have partial uh, partial shielding, of course, the performance is uh, performance difference is definitely there. Yeah. So it's definitely, you know, critical for, you know, critical applications that you make sure that you have good signal integrity there. Yeah, yeah. that is uh, that is absolutely necessary. And, and uh, secondly, um, because an industrial environment, uh, as said, is different than an office environment uh, where you often see still, um, let's say, unshielded solutions, unshielded cable solutions. An industrial environment is predominantly using shielded uh, cables. Uh, shielded connections and of course your connector needs to be 100% suited to uh, keep that shielding over the entire transmission path. Great. Rud, could you tell us a little bit about the Mini IO products which you currently have available and maybe some of the additions to the family that we could expect to see soon? Um, yeah, um, as said, uh, board connectors was one side of, uh, of uh, the connectivity spectrum that we offer for our product families. With Mini I.O. we have right angle and we have uh, vertical uh, board connectors and they come in two types, type 1, type 2, also referred to as decode and u-code. Uh, those are two different type of mating interfaces and you can equip a piece uh, of equipment with uh, the two versions and then because a u-shaped connector only made with a u-shaped and a d with a d, uh, you can prevent that uh, the cord sets that you're using uh, uh, cannot be uh, made it wrongly. So mismating is absolutely uh, prevented in that way. And these type 1 and type 2s are um, supported over the entire family. So you will find them back in the cord sets as well. Well, we have uh, cable plugs that can be mounted on cable by either soldering or by piercing technology. And then you can decide uh, different sizes uh, of wires within the cables uh, to be terminated by those connectors. So we got different variants for different wire uh, sizes. And the last addition uh, to our uh, family uh, is field installable connectors. At this very moment, we're bringing uh, uh, to the market a field installable connector that is used for legacy cabling. So you can use it for the standard four wire AWG 22 cables um, and uh, the next series which will be coming out around April May time frame uh, they will be an eight wire variant and that okay. will unleash the full potential uh, in one gig and 10 gig uh, transmission speeds and um, yeah I would say uh, that particular um, product family is supporting AWG 24 26 cables yeah, which are quite common in the um, in the case of an uh, an Ethernet connection. Great. So yeah, so there's there's a lot to uh, to look forward to there, which is great. One of the things um, we're talking about the the industrial arena. It's it's a great time at the moment for innovation. So we're thinking things like uh, Industry 4.0, IIoT, and how that is shaping the the industrial technologies. What is it that's exciting you particularly about what's happening within the industry right now with those technologies? Yeah, I think uh, Mini IO is already a an, an, an good example of um, innovations in the industrial environment. You see that the industry uh, is asking for solutions 
uh, that uh, go a little bit beyond what is available in the market and not typically addressing the industrial applications. Um, another technology uh, which is making its way into the industrial world is single pair Ethernet. Yeah. And single pair Ethernet uh, is absolutely an, an, an interesting technology uh, uh, because it is like uh, mini IO uh, bringing Ethernet uh, to parts of the network, the field edge. Uh, that is currently implemented in many, many different ways, but Ethernet. Um, so I would say that is uh, extremely interesting. And of course, it doesn't come, uh, um, those type of um, technology do not only come in the form of a specific connector interface, connector standard. It comes uh, in the full width of all of the components that you need yeah. to, to build uh, such a port and of course the devices that can be built and applications that can be built later on. So with those type of new developments like with mini IO you see that certain environments in the industry are uh, are unlocked and that we can uh, can build an uh, all ethernet uh, all ethernet network. Yeah. Absolutely. I, th I think yeah th there's a couple you touched on there uh, as well. For us we're seeing a lot of interest in single pair Ethernet uh, within the industrial environment for for good reasons. So uh, it's nice to know that we we're aligned in a lot of the respects of content coming onto Design Spark, but also in line with what you guys are are thinking and, and looking at as well. One of the things, just just to finish, probably a little bit of lightheartedness is uh, normally we would have probably have done this interview maybe face to face at a trade show, for example. Um, but obviously with the you know the the COVID situation and new ways of working and how we get information out to engineers and customers. Has that been a challenge for you guys, or you know, could you maybe just give us a couple of uh, things that maybe you and your team have overcome in this new way of working? Yeah, well, I, I, I think there are a lot of challenges. Uh, there are a lot of team challenges. There are a lot of personal challenges. Uh, the good thing uh, about the personal challenges that I've been able to uh, confiscate the uh, executive floor in my uh, my own house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the attic is uh, is mine, the new territory. Um, well, we're pretty pretty good equipped. Uh, let's say that uh, the, the the TE as a company supports us extremely well in the in the form of reliable networking, uh, secure networking. And we are able to use all of our applications uh, no matter where we are. So I think, personally speaking, uh, uh, quite good. Um, then if you talk about a team, uh, what we are missing is face-to-face -face meetings, uh, direct uh, talk time uh, to people. Uh, you see that you're missing uh, out on, uh, well, I just jump to the next uh, to the next desk and have a quick chat and uh, with that, those answers, uh, we can move uh, we can move on. Um, things need to be planned and uh, they are planned on, uh, let's say, half an hour uh, basis uh, for a phone uh, conversation. And it's very, very difficult because people's agendas are, are pretty tightened up uh, with that. On the other hand, I think uh, um, it is all about uh, the first time that we experience it. And after a while, you will be certainly experiencing that you get better and better at it. Yeah. Uh, see where the pitfalls are and, and what kind of things need to be done in order to uh, to smoothen things out. And uh, yeah, it's a learning stage. We're getting better at it. And by the time I hope that we're good at it, uh, we're going to go into the reverse direction. Uh. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Rude, it's been absolutely great talking to you today and finding out a little bit more about uh, Mini IO. I really appreciate the time that you've spent with us today. And I hope, you know, real soon we can have you back on Design Spark and we can have some further conversations. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be delighted. Uh, I hope that it was of use. And uh, certainly uh, I'm happy to look at uh, possible follow-ons. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye for now. Yeah, bye.